Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So today we're actually going to take a more in-depth look at how to use PF and QoS. So um, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to look at the cues, um, more about the syntax of them and things of that nature. So what I've done um, essentially is I've just set up oops, a very simple LAN and WAN configuration. And I, I have the normal things for an OpenBSD router and firewall configured. So what we're going to do is just go into Etsy pfconf. And right now we only have four rules. We're blocking everything. We're passing our land traffic in. And then we're passing that out, changing the address of it, and letting everything from the firewall out on that fourth rule. But what we want to add is not just filtering. We want to add a form of bandwidth control, and in our case, this is going to be queuing. And by using the queues, what we're going to end up doing is applying things like shaping and policing to our traffic. So we're not only controlling what traffic can flow between interfaces, but we're controlling how fast that traffic can flow and characteristics of it like that. Now, you want all of these to be above the filter rules. So you want this to be above the block drop all. And the whole idea is just like we have pass or block as our filter option, we want to have Q as our option here. So we want to say Q, and then we want a name for the Q. Now, I'm going to actually show you how to control the speed of traffic on both the LAN and the WAN in this example. So to do, um, to do that, we're going to say um, full speed WAN, and then its bandwidth is the keyword we need. We want the full speed of that to be 1M for 1 megabit. And then we want, I'm sorry, we want to say Q full speed band full speed WAN, and then just like a filter rule has an on uh, parameter, we want to say on, we can use our macro the same way, we're going to use WAN here, and then we're going to say the same thing down below this, but this time say LAN there, and when you specify the interface, specify LAN. Okay, so <clears throat> These are your main cues, and what we're doing is saying this envelope, basically, or bucket, can hold one megabit of data, and the other one there can hold another one megabit of data. So, from there, though, we need, essentially, child cues. The first two cues I just made that are linked with those interfaces are called parent cues. All right, so those are parent cues, and that's the entire bandwidth of the interface. So to make these child cues, we have to say Q. So we're gonna have the average, um, the, the average WAN Q, and this is gonna have a parent of the full speed WAN. Now you don't specify an interface for the child cues. And that's because the parent's specified interface will uh, take effect for that. But we do need to specify bandwidth for it. And we're going to specify about 500k. So 500 kilobits for that Q. Now, you can specify minimum here. So I could say minimum is 250 kilobits of that. And then I could say max is 500 of that. Now, this is how I did it for a while. I don't recommend it. And the, there's actually a reason behind it, and the reason is, is when you have quite a bit of traffic and you're trying to queue it, if you're giving a minimum of, you know, let's say we have 100 megabits, and I'm giving a minimum of 65 megabits, attempting to give that to every flow, that starves out every flow very quickly, and it will make your speed overall a lot slower. 
<clears throat> and um, that's what I experienced. So the only one you actually want to specify here is max. So this is the entirety of the queue, and then we can say, you can use up to this. All right, and this is the, the one for the WAN right now. So that's what we're going to have there. And we're going to say Q average LAN, parent full speed LAN, bandwidth 500K, and then that the max again, 500K. Now, um, we've specified our queues, and what we actually want to do now is take the traffic coming in on our LAN and place those packets in the Q average LAN and then the traffic that will be going out of our WAN interface, we want to place those packets in the average WAN queue. All right, so essentially we're putting them in two, you know, boxes that can hold, you know, 500, uh, you know, 500 kilobits each, essentially, instead of our full speed. So on this LAN rule, at the end of it, you just say set queue, and then in uh, parentheses, we're going to say average LAN, and that will place those packets in that queue. Same thing here on this one. We're going to say set queue, average LAN. Oops. Now, you do want to make sure you have uh, parentheses around there. And there is one more important thing that you want to have. We actually want to have a queue that's only for traffic that we actually don't put specifically in its own queue. We have the one megabit on both our WAN and LAN as the full bandwidth. But these best effort queues, we don't actually have to make a filter rule that places packets in these queues because those are the default uh, cues for that interface. So it's like a catch-all queue. So if any packets on the LAN and WAN don't match these rules, they're going to be placed in this queue and we give them 250 kilobits of bandwidth. And that's why you need default at the end. All right. So everything that doesn't have default, these two queues for 500 kilobits per second, they have to have a filter rule that references them. So when we pass in on our LAN from the LAN network to any, we are putting those packets with set queue and average LAN queue. Likewise, when we pass out on the WAN, we are setting those packets in the queue average WAN. So now we can save that. And we're going to go ahead and check our file. Let's flush everything and reload. Now, you can see the rules with pfctl-sr. That's our filtering rules, and they, you can see they reference queues. To see the queues, you have to use pfctl-sq, and that shows us all our queues. All right, so then it's easier to see what's happening. You can also use sysstat queue and then uh, timeout for a refresh rate. And you can see each of the main queue and then the, the queues for that. Now, these do use a first in, first out scheduler. That's another um, uh, portion of queuing, but these are different. Uh, we're not dealing with schedulers in this case for these queues. So let's go out to speedtest.net and I wanna show you the effect these queues have on our LAN to WAN traffic. So I will see you in a second with those queues in place. And um, we, we should, in this case, with this traffic, we should see about one megabit. And it should be one megabit in and out. All right, and with slower speeds, sometimes it takes a second. But uh, as you can see, um, we have that speed there coming in, about 40. But on the queue, on the um, going out, you're going to see that as well. Now with this here, with the Sysstat queue, now I can see average WAN, our 500 uh, kilobit per second queue, that gave us about, that the packets went into that queue and out of it. 
So that was why our service was at that speed for um, coming into our LAN interface and being routed out of our WAN because those filter rules told PF and the networking stack to put those packets in the queues and then when they're sent out, they are serviced at that rate. See, the, the scheduler has more to do with which packets get sent out of the queue first in an individual queue, and that's a different part of this. But right now, this is we're, we're shaping the traffic to about 500 kilobits. So what I'm going to do next is, un, is uh, comment the main rules that we're setting the packets in the queues. We're going to take those off, and what's going to happen is we will still see an effect of our default queue kick in. So I will see you in a second. All right, so now all I have done is went ahead and took out the queue part of those two filter rules. So now they're just normal filter rules. We still have our queues and we still have our default queue. Remember, because the rules don't specify a queue, the packets in this case, because they don't match anything, will be placed in our default queue for the LAN interface and the WAN interface, which in this case is 250 kilobits a second. So we're going to go back to speedtest.net and let's actually flush that and reload our rules and double check everything. All right, now I will go back to speedtest.net and we'll see the effect of the default queue. But now our packets should be serviced by the 250 uh, kilobit queue. And remember, because that's the default queue. All right, and it is not very much bandwidth, so you're gonna see less because um, when there's less available bandwidth, TCP has uh, less of a window size. And that will make this slower because the fastest this can get is 0.25 on this. And essentially, you may even see less than that because it doesn't have as much time to ramp up the window size. All right, so now if we go to sysstat Q, and then that, uh, you know, the program there. Now, you see the difference? There is no packets that have been put in the average WAN queue or average LAN queue. Where they've been put this time is the best effort WAN that has 3,000 packets in there and the best effort LAN. And this is because they're the default queue. So that's why the default queue is important. Now there is one more thing I want to show you that is quite interesting. Um, it's not quite to do with queuing, but it's a cool thing to know how to do. Uh, you can set delay. And I'm not even going to do, do you on speedtest.net for this one. We're just going to say set delay at the end here. And this is in milliseconds. So I could say add 30 milliseconds on of a delay to traffic. And this is just an interesting thing to know how to do, um, you know, for certain network situations. Not just testing, but sometimes you may want to artificially introduce uh, delay in the network. So let's say we add... 30 uh, milliseconds of delay here. That actually affects um, the traffic in and out. So if I ping, and actually, I am so sorry, you gotta add that on that last rule. I mean, I, I show you all this so you know the mistakes I've made. And then uh, when you go to do it yourself, you, you'll be more informed and not make the same mistakes. But, you know, it happens. So set delay, um, 30. And we'll reload that. And now there's 30 milliseconds more of delay, even from the firewall itself. But this does affect any traffic that would match the rule with delay in it. So uh, with all that, um, we can take that off as well to, to show you the effect of it not on there. Let's go down there and just uh, take this off real quick. Alright, just like that. And now if we ping, we get the normal uh, bandwidth without that artificial delay on there. Alright, so with all that, I do hope uh, this uh, helped you. And it, I hope it helped you improve your knowledge of PF and uh, queuing. 
and hopefully your networks are going to be even faster now. So with all that, thank you for viewing. Um, and as always, it's been Tyler with G-Tech, and have a very nice day.